Elon Musk just finished building a huge Starship rocket factory at SpaceX's testing facility in Starbase, Texas. This is the equivalent of a Tesla Gigafactory and will make rockets at a speed and efficiency that has never been seen before in the aerospace industry. The first thing we need to do is figure out where the Star Factory will be located. It will be right next to the Starbase Line launch pad which you've probably seen in any of the last four orbital flight tests. The current star factory, Elon, has said that during the early stages of making Starship, everything was covered in mud and dust, and there were birds everywhere. But the tents gave SpaceX the flexibility they needed because no one knew what the finished product would look like because Starship had never been built before. The temporary nature of the tents let them make quick changes to the design and manufacturing process, so if something doesn't work, it's thrown away and tried again. So, we ended up with Starship rockets that were sometimes very different from one build to the next, and we could tell by how well or how poorly the vehicles performed in the air. After a lot of trial and error, Elon and SpaceX are now confident in the new Starship design to help them reach some pretty big goals. A fully reusable space vehicle that can take people and things to the Moon and Mars very quickly. Elon has said that the tent system isn't very useful once you know what you want to build. That's where Starship Vi-2 comes in. This is the vehicle that's being made right now in the Star Factory. It's an improvement on the Starship that came about after years of trial and error and many explosions along the way. The design of Starship 5-2, which is sometimes called Block 2, isn't very different at first glance. It will be about 2 meters, 6 feet, taller. But the nose cone and arrow flaps will be very different. If we remember back to Starship Play Test Number 4, we got a close look at that nose flap as it fell apart during re-entry. By the way, that's not supposed to happen and SpaceX knew that their flap design wasn't great to begin with. Before that flight, Elon had doubts about whether the hinge system would be strong enough. He also wrote this post in 2021, saying that forward flaps would be changed a lot in the next versions. But the team needed some real-world flight data to help them figure out what to do, so this is what they came up with. The V2 nose flaps are shaped like a diamond, with a clear point at the trailing edge. This will help push shock waves from the atmosphere away from the ship's body and keep too much pressure from building up under the wing. The V2 flaps are also mounted higher on the nose, which will give them more leverage over the ship, and they are further back on the leeward side of the hull, which will also help keep hot plasma from building up underneath them during re-entry. Also, the new flaps are about half as thick as the originals, and the hinge mechanism is much lower profile. For the heat shield, we got a lot more tiles on the V2 nose cone, and they wrap around to cover more of the leeward side of the vehicle. This should hopefully stop any future melting incidents. It's very important to insulate up here because Starship has a header tank inside the nose cone. This is where they store the propellant for the landing burn. Reporters from Starbase have already seen the V2 nose cone parts being worked on in the Star Factory. This is possible because the work is done right next to a big window. Okay, Elon has said that SpaceX's manufacturing process in the Star Factory is called a linear adjacent flow. This term seems to be something Elon made up, since every Google result is just people trying to figure out what Elon meant when he said it and no one could give a straight answer, even when asked about it on X a few months ago. Elon only answered a few simple but important questions. From what I've learned, Star Factory production is different from the traditional moving assembly line that was created by Henry Ford over a hundred years ago. On a moving assembly line, a product moves down a conveyor belt and is gradually attached to more and more things until it is finished. Elon knows from building Tesla cars that the old system could be a lot better. This linear adjacent flow is likely very similar to, or even the same as, Tesla's unboxed manufacturing process, which is all about building different parts of the car at the same time 
and then putting them all together at the end. This way, instead of building the body of a car from front to back, the parts are built one after the other. On one line, adding doors, sending it to the paint shop, putting it back on the line, taking the doors off, installing the seats, putting the doors back on, you get the idea. Unboxed means building the front and back of the car on two separate lines that run next to or parallel to each other. In one continuous process, the seats are painted and the interior is put in. On a third line next to it, the sides and doors of the car are built. Then, at the final assembly stage, you put the front and back together. Attach the sides and doors, add the glass and wheels, and the car is complete. When Elon talks about the production line in Star Factory, he says that things move through stations. Each station has workers who are trained to do a specific job, and the speed at which the products move from one station to the next is what makes the whole process work. That means no pause and no having to wait for the next thing to come in. Activity on the production line all the time, but the line itself doesn't move. Elon says it doesn't matter if there's a belt. This is what happens in the Star Factory. At the farthest end of the building from the road, huge rolls of stainless steel are cut and welded into rings. These rings make up the ship's body. The nose cone is a little trickier to make because the stainless steel needs to be pressed into shape with a hydro-forming machine. The same machine is used to make the round domes that cover the tops and bottoms of the ship's fuel tanks. The rings are then stacked and welded together to make sections with three to five rings each. As we get closer to the road, we can see that the roof of the Star Factory gets higher. This is in line with how the rocket parts get taller as they move down the assembly lines. Towards the end, everything starts to look more like a spaceship and less like a pile of steel. We can see that SpaceX has different areas for installing and checking heat shield tiles, as well as for plumbing fuel tanks and putting together thruster assemblies. They also have a big glass box full of desks that looks like a cool place to work, but the Star Factory isn't tall enough to hold a fully assembled Starship. So, just like Tesla builds the front, back, and sides of the car separately, SpaceX builds the top, bottom, and middle of the Starship in separate segments. You can see that the nose cone comes out of the Star Factory with its flaps and heat shield installed. There's a lot of plumbing and electrical work going on inside. The middle of the rocket is mostly huge propellant tanks, with a lot of pipes running through them. The bottom is where the magic happens, the thrust segment. Those three chunks are then taken out of the Star Factory and moved to the Mega Bay, which is the Starship's version of a general assembly area. While Starbase has two Mega Bays, this is where the final rocket stacking, Raptor engine installation, and other finishing touches are made to make the vehicle ready for action. Elon Musk has big plans for making starships. And this Star Factory might be the first one, but it won't be the last. Elon thinks that SpaceX could build 1,000 starships a year in the long term, which would be enough to build a city on Mars. In the short term, he thinks that the current Star Factory can make about 100 rockets a year, which is one rocket every three days. SpaceX is also laying the groundwork for Star Factory 2 on their property on Cape Canaveral, close to the launch pad that's also being built for Starship. This would at least double the number of rockets that could be built, to one every day and a half. With some extra efficiency added in, SpaceX could suddenly be building one rocket every day. The company is already making just under 200 Falcon 9 upper stage platforms a year, and that number will rise to over 200 next year. That's a simpler bill. The Falcon upper stage is mostly made up of one engine and a payload adapter. But as long as the manufacturing process can change to the size of the rocket being built, Elon's statement is not the craziest thing he has ever said.